So Mackie, who if you don't remember, Mackie released that giant mixer called the DLZ Creator that I actually f- fell in love with. And they're a long time, very professional audio company, but they just released this little device called the Mainstream. And they made it very clear that they wanna be taken seriously by the content creation industry, or I should say by content creators. And this is, I think they did a very good job, by the way. This is a really cool device with a lot of really cool stuff. Um, also a lot of really creative stuff, but also a couple potential deal breakers for you. And some of you actually, if you've got a very trained ear, might be able to hear one of those deal breakers. This microphone right now is going into this device and it sounds pretty good. I'll be recording the entire thing through this device. And I'm not trying to say it sounds like garbage, but some of you, if you know, you know, and I'll explain it later. So this is the Mackie Mainstream, welcome. And it is an all-in-one device, meaning it's both an audio interface and it's a capture card hub for your camera. And that might sound familiar to you because recently Rode released the Streamer X, which is an audio interface with a capture card built into it. But when this device first came out and I did a video on it, I had some concerns about it. And it seems like Mackie has actually fixed a lot of those concerns with their device. Like for example, it's a hundred dollars cheaper. Also, you can plug a webcam into this or even plug a Stream Deck Plus into this. So let's talk more about this thing. Hey, can I show you the before and after of lighting this shot? You ready? This is the before. This is after. This looks a lot better, doesn't it? Every one of these lights, by the way, is an Amaran light. Here, we'll start it over and we'll turn them on one by one. First, we've got the F22C panel on my face. We've got a 150C as my fill light, a 60X as my hair light, their PT4C tube light to light up this side of the wall, and then another 150C with a spotlight on it to light up this wall. Listen, the 150C, and 300C here, super cool. The C stands for color, so you can make it any color you want. So you can get super flexible with them. That's how I get this bluish tint on the right side of my face that looks really cool. I've been using this in our merch photos lately and I don't have to use any of those like color gel inserts, which I would lose so fast. And then also the Spotlight SE is really cool. You can drop in filters for really cool light effects. You can also use the built-in shutters to light a very specific area. Anyway, I will link to both the Spotlight SE and the 150C in the description down below. I'm obsessed with Amaran lights, but if you've watched any of our studio tours, you already knew that. Huge thank you, Amaran, for sponsoring this video and, of course, making every video on this channel look good. So look, summary of this whole thing, all-in-one devices can be really cool. There are a lot of reasons why someone would get an all-in-one device. First, it makes the experience simpler. You have your audio and your video all-in-one device. (laughs) All-in-one device. Two, if you plan on moving your streaming setup to a different room, like maybe doing a kitchen stream, it's very easy. This This is your entire setup right here. And then also, cost savings. For $300, which is the price of the Mackie Mainstream, you get a mic interface, mixing hardware, you get hotkeys up top, and you get a capture card. I'll have Dustin do the math of exactly what that would cost with Elgato stuff. The problem with all-in-one devices is it's all-in-one. So if you want to upgrade a single portion, you kind of have to... (laughs) kind of have to toss the whole thing. When the Rode Streamer X came out, I had a hard time figuring out who it was for because it feels like it's designed for a new streamer, someone who doesn't have an audio interface or a capture card, but it's $400. So it's not really priced for someone who's brand new into this, but then it's kind of missing some pro features you should get at that price point and you can't really upgrade it because it's an all-in-one device. Anyway, you can see my problem there. So it became very niche. Like only the people who needed exactly what this did ended up buying it and it wasn't really useful for anyone else. Enter the Mackie Mainstream. Let's take a look at exactly what's different on this thing and how they made it better. First thing you notice is that it's a lot bigger and there are a lot more knobs on this thing. And I like a lot of knobs. You can quote me on that. You got five dials on this thing. You have a microphone gain dial right there. You have a PC volume dial there. You have an HDMI dial there, and we will get into that in a second. And so those are your input dials on the left side. On the right side, you have your output dials. So you have your headphone volume right here, and you have your monitor, like big boy speaker volume dial right there. And we will get into that in a second too. Then you have these two nice little rubber clicky mute buttons on each side. So on this side, you have your aux in mute and your microphone mute. And on this side, you have your HDMI mute and your headphone slash speaker mute. And these buttons on here, in fact, every button on here is a very satisfying clicky button. Like here, just just listen to this. And these buttons can basically do anything you want them to do. So they're, they're essentially F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and F6. So in OBS, you go to hotkeys, you wanna change to this scene and you set that hotkey as F1. 
this will change your scene. So it's like a super simplistic and minimal stream deck up there. All right, let's get into the ports on the back of this thing here because that's where it gets really interesting. So starting from this side, you can't see it because it's covered up by my mic jack, but this is a combo port. So you got XLR as well as quarter inch. Just so you can see what that looks like, it looks like looks like this. You get your gaming headset jack, so if you wanna use your headset mic, you'd plug in right there. And then you got this phantom power button as well as this little hardware button to turn on and off mic monitoring. So if you want to hear yourself or not hear yourself, you click that button right there, which is kinda of neat. And then you got an aux in, which they label with a phone, but I'd say that's probably gonna be more commonly used with dual PC setups. I mean, it's, it's just a line in jack. You've got a quarter inch headphone out right there as well as big boy speaker outs. That's a big deal. I'm kind of pumped about that. I love that Mackie's entire lineup has big boy monitor outs like this. For people like me who love using speakers or people who want to sit at like an editing desk with, you know, bigger speakers at them, that's huge. So really cool addition right there, especially since you have a dedicated knob just to that output. Then you get your HDMI in and out as well as three USB ports. And there's a lot different here from the Streamer X. Not that this needs to be a giant comparison video between the two, this is its own device. But the fact that you've got so much more IO, so much more control, and it's still $100 cheaper, there's gotta be reasons for it. And there are a couple here. First off, the microphone preamp in here is not the same preamp you see in the giant DLZ devices. It doesn't have 80 dB of gain. It only has 60 dB of gain. And uh, one of the deal breakers, in fact, this might be the biggest deal breaker for you guys. I think 60 dB of gain would be about the minimum that you'd need to power an SM7B. I'm using the SM7DB that has its own preamp built into it and it's powering its own 28 extra dB of gain. So I'm, I'm only using about 30 dB of gain from this device. And this was kind of a bummer. I don't know if it's specific to this one device. Maybe I got a little bit of a bum one, but let me show you what happens if I turn off the preamp and I just use a regular SM7B and I crank up the gain here. Because so far, and you probably agree with me, this has sounded pretty good. Let me change this. Check, check, check. Okay. I've got this cranked up to maybe 95%. I'll go up to 100. This is it at 100%. Do you hear that? I'm sure you do. I don't know if I got a bum preamp in this thing. I'm gonna reach out to Mackie and send him an audio file of this and say like, hey, is this in all of your devices? Is this what happens when you crank it all the way up or is this just on mine? So I heard back from Mackie. Looks like it was a problem with my particular device because I asked him to send a clip of him using it with an SM7B and then show me the gain dial. Here's what he sent. I'm Ty, I'm with Mackie. I'm here at the Mackie booth at NAMM 2024. If you're at NAMM, feel free to come check us out. We're here until Sunday, we'd love to see you. And you can check out the new Mackie mainstream. You can use any microphone you would like. These preamps sound amazing and they will get the job done for you. So I don't know if it was the preamp or some kind of interference, but it's good to know the device actually sounds great. That was the deal breaker I mentioned in the beginning of this video. If you like crank this and listen really closely, you can still hear it really, really small, but it's definitely nothing anyone's gonna notice, at least in a live stream, and probably not in a YouTube video either. Did you notice it before this point, before I pointed that out? Leave it in a comment down below. And while you're down there, hit the like button, because it helps out the video a lot, and um, subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. Another area they saved some money was in the capture card, where just like the Rode Streamer X, it's got 4K60 pass-through. That also means that I wouldn't put anything like a PS5 or any current-gen console through there, because there's not gonna be any variable refresh rate, you're not gonna get high frame rates, just 4K60 but the capture is only 1080 60 versus the 4K 30 inside the Rode Streamer X. So it'll work great for a camera, it'll work great for a switch, it'll even work great for a current gen console if you're only playing at 4K 60 anyway, and if you're only streaming on Twitch where you can only stream in 1080 60, it's actually fine. And I think for most streamers, that's probably a good way to save money. This is where it gets really interesting. I thought this was gonna be like the Streamer X, where this one is power, it's got a little lightning bolt next to it, and then these two go to two different PCs. That's not what this is. This is your power and your connection to your PC. These two are additional USB ports like a hub. You've got a built-in USB hub into this. This one is a USB 2.0. This is a USB 10 gigabit port, which is why I mentioned you could have your console plugged into here and then plug a webcam into your HDMI 2.0 or 3.2 spots. Or let's say you've been using this for your capture card and you wanna upgrade to a mirrorless camera and you wanna upgrade your capture card to do HDMI 2.1. You can plug your camera into here and then plug something like a new, uh, the new Avermedia capture card into this USB 3.2 spot and get that 4K 144 pass-through as well as 
higher end capture. Or if you wanna get really crazy here and you want a virtual mixer that can separate your teammates from your game sounds from your music, you can plug a Stream Deck Plus into the USB 2.0 spot. Then you would essentially feed this through the Wavelink software and use this as your microphone input. And this just becomes like your hardware mixing interface for your headphones, your speakers, your two PC setup while you're mixing your software inputs through your Stream Deck Plus. I kind of plan on doing something like this with my Switch to make this an audio interface for my Switch and my TV and my giant monitors. I don't wanna play the Switch through my TV speakers, I wanna play through my giant Mackie speakers so I can plug my Switch through here, through the HDMI into the TV, capture the audio, and then go out through the speakers. This is kind of a really cool versatile device because all the hardware it's got built into it. Something you should know, and I think this is a really weird choice, even though this input right here is a 10 gig USB port, this port is only a five gig. So yes, you could plug one of the brand new HDMI 2.1 capture cards into here, but you need to make sure you're not maxing out the five gigabits per second bandwidth right here. Especially if you're using the camera capture right here, you'd probably have to turn down the capture to like 1080, 60 max. I don't know what theoretically you'll actually be able to do with these capture cards, where the, where the threshold is gonna be, but just know that there is that maximum bandwidth of five gigabits per second. Last thing about this you should definitely know, they're also releasing software for this called the Mackie Matrix, which gives you that mixing capability that I mentioned before with the Stream Deck Plus, where it gives you a bunch of virtual inputs and outputs so you can separate your game volume from your teammate volume from your music volume and you can also output a different output to your stream and to your monitors and to discord and even a fourth one in case you want to do a vod track to twitch this should be coming out within the next week or two tops is what they told me it's definitely not as polished of software as like the beacon software or the elgato wavelength software so you should be aware there and that's why i mentioned plugging in a stream deck plus because that will be a better experience. You'll get a better software mixer and you'll get hardware dials to control it rather than using your keyboard and mouse. But it's worth knowing that if you don't have some of that hardware and you want those capabilities, that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. In fact, I've already tested it and used it. I've sent them a laundry list of things I want them to change, but for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you have any? If so, leave them in a comment down below. And if you don't, just leave your favorite emoji for engagement. Thank you. And also while you're here, go ahead and run to senpai.tv, pick yourself up a uh, Vitruvian waifu t-shirt because this thing's dope and it's available right now. And also YouTube members get uh, $5 off of anything they buy. It's 2 a.m. and I'm sick, so I'm gonna end this. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Happy streaming.